What was it like playing with Tom Brady? You went to New England, and then you followed him in Tampa. I know you were on the practice squad. Who cares? You were on the field with Tom Brady. What is it like playing with Tom Brady? You know the winning expectation is far greater than any other team that you've been on. You know that the probability of you winning is far greater than any team that you've ever been on. You know that the standard that's required of you to play at is far greater than any team that you've ever been on because of what comes with Tom. You know winning comes with Tom. So to be on that field with him and to be able to see how he operates, how he thinks, how he moves, to see the mannerisms of the greatest player that's ever touched a football in the history of football, not too many get that opportunity. So to sit back and be able to observe this guy and hear his thought process, be in meetings with him and hear how he thinks and what he's looking at and the way he's looking at, man, it was an incredible thing. It's something that I'll never take for granted. The things that he spoke of and how he carried himself. You always wonder how greatness carries itself. And to be in a locker room and be on the field with a guy like that, you get to see it up close and personal. You see why he is what he is. What is it like beating him? It's an even greater <laughs> thing. <laughs> it is, man, because you understand, especially at that time, Tom Brady and the New England Patriots, mm -hmm. they were the golden standard. There was nothing or no one higher than Tom Brady and the New England Patriots. So to be able to beat him in a Super Bowl, not just a mm -hmm. regular season game, but a Super Bowl, I could say something a lot of guys can't say. I was a part of a team and played on the field and played on a team that beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. You were um, also part of a team and a fan base that ate. <laughs> trying to get that image Horse out of crap. his head. I never heard that. I never seen it. <laughs> And I love Philadelphia, and my belief in Philadelphia is far greater than that. So I don't believe. I'm going to have don't to send you. Know. He wants to get the image out of his head. We will no longer be blood brothers if we do this. Our relationship is done. We are no longer team towards after this. I remember um, when I first watched you play, you were actually at Oregon in a duo with Michael James. Chip Kelly was at Oregon too, and then you played with Chip Kelly when he was in the NFL with the Eagles. So what was he like as a college coach and the NFL coach? What were the differences you know, with him? There was no difference. That's one of the great things about Chip that I respect. He didn't change. He didn't allow the level in which he was at to change who he was and what he believed in and how he operated as a head coach. With Chip, it was either you loved him or you hated him. There's no in between with Chip. He's not a people pleaser. He's not worried about kissing your butt and making sure you feel okay. That's not who Chip is. I happen to know Chip since I was 18 years old. So to see him reach the pinnacle of a coaching career and watch guys dream of getting to the NFL and him be the same exact guy that he was when I met him at 18, that was a joy to me. Again, a lot of guys didn't like him for that, but I loved him for it. And that's all I knew. So I don't know him to be anything different other than what Chip Kelly is. I'm not going to say he's not a people person. He's just not one that's going to sugarcoat or kiss your butt. The man knows his stuff when it comes to the game of football. One of the most brilliant minds I've been around when it comes to football. Innovative with that spread offense. The NFL, a lot of coaches talk down on that spread offense. But even still to this day, things get used from what Chip Kelly brought to the NFL and what he did in college. So you can say what you want about the man, but he made an impact and left an impact on the NFL. Everybody is using in that spread offense now. Exactly. And everybody made fun of Chip Kelly coming from Oregon to the NFL and it wasn't going to work. And if you look at Chip Kelly's record, he has Talk a winning record. It. Talk about it. The first two seasons... What, went one 10 games? Yes. Both seasons. And he gets fired. That's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, His know, ego took yeah, over at that yeah, point. Well. I love coaches that have egos because all the great ones, if you look at every single great coach in all professional sports, even Greg Popovich, everybody keeps talking about this kid that was drafted, greatest prospect ever to come out of a draft. Greg Popovich, he was as good as his team, but he would go out it's there. Better. Yes, he was there for David Robertson, he was there for Tim Duncan, and now he's there and for he's Victor. Really so... Guys. Yeah, so you look at coaches, they are defined by the players around them. So if Chip Kelly believes in his talent around him, and he knows that his talent could beat anybody on the field, why not be the cocky person that he is? More than that, Chip believed in his system. He believed that what he did offensively, it couldn't be touched. And for a very long time, that was very true. It didn't matter who he had, you're going to plug and play. He gets guys that he knows can do what he needs them to do, they make it work. But Chip believes in his system, he believes in the guys that he has, and he's one of those guys who his way or the highway.